Okay, so I'm here with Mr. Dara Ward, who's going to be fighting at Cage Warriors this weekend. One of the, the biggest talents uh, in amateur last year, obviously turned pro. Uh, we've seen his fight where his uh, his jiu-jitsu, his, his opponent, the, the jiu-jitsu mm -hmm. just seemed to be not working on him, but he wasn't giving up. You're going into Cage Warriors now. How are you feeling? Fight week There's only a couple of days to go. How are you feeling about the, the whole uh, event? I'm good, bro. I'm good. Uh, I can't wait. Look, it's just... Uh... It's a big event, man, and it's huge for Irish MMA right now. There's lots of talented Irish fighters on it, from lads that are lads that are knocking on the door of the UFC, uh, Hughes obviously and Sheen, and obviously my teammates themselves, Taka and Ryan. Uh, there's high level fights on it, and then there's guys that are kicking off their pro career. There's loads of good debuts on it. Lads like myself, I'm only one and all, and I'm after getting straight into cage warriors, so I'm delighted to be honest to be with the promotion it was always kind of the plan to head that way and I'm just delighted to be on the card man I can't wait and it's just I'm I'm just a small part in uh, what's going to be a great night like I can't I can't wait to play my part yeah no and, and we can't wait to see it as well especially like I said you were you were probably one of the top amateurs last year you turned pro and but you just talked about the card there I'm looking at that card and going my god this is stacked like I said you've got the likes of yeah. the lady who's making his debut on it uh, yeah it's it's savage, dude. It's a really good card, like, and a lot of people, a lot of people that, or a lot of guys on it, uh, that people haven't heard about yet, that they're gonna be hearing a lot about, like, you know, my myself included, but like a lot of lads that are gonna come up now, and this is just the platform that they're after getting, and it's savage that they're after getting that platform, where they can compete, they can show their level now, and I think it's a huge opportunity to show that Irish MMA is fucking talented like you know you're going to see uh, I think you're going to see a lot of wins for the Irish that night you know my me and my team we're all going to go in and clean house and then fucking all the Irish lads I fit and all of them like you know they're all fucking good talented lads and I think the Irish MMA level is very high and like you see it everywhere like you know the guys the guys all fight each other over here and they're all beating each other and stuff like that and then they go over to other countries and they're cleaning out like you know they go over to England or do care and like that and they clean out to win all their fights over there like it's it's just I know we have more of a fighter in us or we're just we're that kind of people like you know we're bred for it a lot of people like a lot of us are like that's just why we're we're thrown in there and it suits us very well but I think you're going to see a great level of Irish MMA talent at the weekend I, I think you're 100% right. And you actually answered the question I was about to ask. And what, what, <laughs> I'll just tell you the question now because you realise how you answered it. Why are the Irish fighters getting opportunities so early on in Cage Warriors? Yeah. And my what I was going to say is what exactly you said. Because you're fighting uh, the best of the best, everyone's fighting each other. You look at young young McGuigan and Cleland, who yeah. there a couple of weeks ago, probably one of... Exactly. Like, look at that. Two of the best, and they're fighting each other again. And it just... Do you think exactly. that's what has propelled us into the likes of Cage Warriors, Octagon? Um, exactly, exactly, Island man. And, and exactly, and I think Cage Warriors notices, I think they notice, uh, they notice the level of Irish MMA, and that's why they have faith in putting these young Irish guys on the card, like, you know, because they can see what we're doing out there, you know, they watch some of our performances from the amateur scene, and they're like, these guys are going to be able to put on good fights, like, and these guys all want to fight, like, you know, there's not like, there's when you book most of us guys to fight like there's not going to be any issue like we just sign on the dotted line all we want to do is make the way and then all we want to do is fight there's no other issues going around about like i would need this i need that done or there's no wins or anything like that we all just we all want to fight and we're all game to fight and no matter what like wins or losses the irish are always game to fight it's the way we've always been so i think cage warriors notices that i think they can see that by looking at our amateur scene and I think that's why they're getting so many young Irish lads involved. Now, I'm not sure uh, how many of these young guys are signed to Cage Warriors. I'm lucky enough that I got a contract with them and I'm delighted to to be signed with them. Uh, I can't wait for to fight all my fights on that contract and then see what's after that. But I think you're going to see a lot of guys rising through Cage Warriors in the next few years. And I think this is just the start of it. You know, this is going to be a big night in Irish MMA that people are going to talk about for years because it's going to be like, oh, I remember they were on that card and they were on that card and everyone's going to propel off this, you know. Uh, in my head, anyways, everyone's going to propel off this and it's a great platform for Irish MMA, so I can't wait for it. Yeah, no, it is. And like you said, you obviously have the you have you have a, a multi-fight contract, others might be just on the night, but that's their time yeah. to, 
shine and prove to Cage Warriors why they deserve a multi-fight contract. So I just think the scene right now is is unbelievably stacked and talented. And it's just crazy. Yeah. This little island, like compared to, to other places. And you look at the, the youths with Danny McCormick that have just been out. Uh, yeah, yeah they're after to win, they're after winning a lot of medals out there, like, you know. 23 medals, I want to say, or was it 33? Like, yeah. for I think I think it was island, crazy. Yeah, I think I've I seen a lot of medals as well. And, like, you know what it is? It's always just, it's like what I was just saying. It's always just being game to compete. Like, you know, the guys, we see an opportunity and there's nothing, he, there's no hesitation. We take it, you know? And, like, it's the same as anyone else. Like, yeah, we have feelings. Like, you might be scary. You might feel this way or that way. But we understand the opportunity that's in front of us and we're going to take it every time, you know, every time I'm going to take that opportunity, you know, no matter how high of the risk it's going to be, every time I'm going to take the opportunity. If it means that it jumps me up a bit higher on that ladder to where I want to be, like, you know. Yeah, and, and you started off your professional career fantastically with a fantastic performance. You want to talk to us about that? Because I remember watching that and I don't know, did that guy have rubber arms or, or what was going on? <laughs> He didn't want to tap. You have to. You have to admire the dog, and I might say, like, yeah, I'm yeah. There's, the there's lots. Day, of, how was that? There's lots of. There's lots of people that actually said that to me about about uh his arm, all right, and how does the arm not break and stuff like that. Uh, so in the first round of the fight, I had him in, I had him in two deep arm bars, and, uh, me and my coach actually noticed that. Well, my two coaches noticed that Chris Anfield, uh. The arm bars were on, but the bite was a little bit off. I knew I was a little bit off, but I was still trying to break his arm. <laughs> I was trying my hardest, but the bite was a little bit off. Every time I moved a certain way, he just moved with me. And he was a good guy. He understood which ways to be moving and stuff like that. And then the second round, he he was very scrambly in the first round. So I was trying to secure a position. And then it was kind of like a bit of excitement as well. I was like, I'm going to jump for this arm bar. Fuck it. I thought it was there. And I really, I really thought I had it, especially the second time. The second time it was very deep. And then I kind of said after that, I was like, right, let's establish this position now and let's just land shots on him. I knew after he had a few scrambles in the first round that a few shots in the second to soften him up and he'd start slowing down and that was the case. I, I could feel him straight away going from under me. Once I got in the back and I started landing a few shots, I knew I was like, I'm going to keep doing this all day until this ref pulls me off him and there's no way out of it. Like, I knew I was too confident in it. And yeah, the arm bars is just... We we knew we knew in the corner and I knew myself the bites were a little bit off but I was after jumping for it I was already in the full blown armbar so I was like fuck this I need to go for this I'm gonna try break his arm and if he gets out he gets out and look he got out but it didn't it didn't do him much uh, it didn't do much good getting out <laughs> no no it didn't and it doesn't matter it shows you how jiu jitsu is a game of millimeters that he just turns his yeah. arm one way and, and completely not nullifies your your bite obviously it's still gonna be sore but it, he just takes it away that it can't actually be broken in the position yeah. it just yeah. shows how that's, technical jiu-jitsu that's is. exactly that's exactly what it was he he moved a slight way and i could put a lot of pressure into it but i wasn't able to break his arm whereas like if you have the bite right you should be able to break their arm when you're doing the arm bar i just had the bite was a little bit off but practice repetition next time i swing for an arm bar i'm breaking the cunt's arm <laughs> right, we'll see if you get an arm bar this weekend. But would obviously, see. Won, obviously you won that fight, and we talked before. You take away something from every fight. What was the biggest kind of takeaway you took from that fight leading into this this next opportunity? Just just enjoying the day by day, man. Just enjoying every day, like you know, and uh, taking the good out of every day, like you know, just noticing. I've I've practiced a lot. I was practicing before the last fight, but practicing a lot now just in my day to day. Uh not working myself up anymore. You know, like this is just like there's no point working myself up for every single fight. You know, you work myself up a lot for the last one because it's my pro debut. This is my debut on Cage Warriors. I'm just I'm not I'm ready to compete. You know, I know I'm ready to compete. I fucking I train with the best guys in the country for sure. And then in Europe like is we're like one we're one of the best teams in Europe now as well. You can see that from what we do on the scene. And we're just gonna have more and more lads coming through in KF that are going to be proving that for us. But I'm just understanding now I'm meant to be where I'm gonna be and or I'm meant to be where I am right now and there's no point working myself up for every fight because this is what I do for a living. This is it now. So every fight, it's going to be the same again. Every fucking three, four months, it's just going to be fight, 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 fight. 
and there's no point working myself up for them. That's what I learned. I learned it's just better enjoy the day by day because I love training, I love fighting, and it's just not letting anything get into your head. Like, you know, don't be, there's no need. Obviously, you can get nervous. Obviously, you can feel the way, like, everyone has certain feelings and stuff like that. You can get nervous, you can get jarry before a fight, all that kind of things. But the main thing is just, that doesn't mean that you're not meant to be here. You know, I've really taken that for, I'm still meant to be here. Um, meant to be where I am right now. I'm signed to Cage Warriors because I'm good enough to be signed to Cage Warriors. And that's it. It's just, other than that, all I can do is work hard and go out and try to perform. And I know, I know the level I can perform at. So to answer like, yeah, just enjoying the day by day is what I'm trying to do. Just every day, every day, just enjoying it as much as I can, getting as much as I can out of the day and trying to get that little bit better just every day by day. And I feel like I've really nailed that down this camp. Yeah, no, that's good. And and it sounds like obviously mentally you're in a maturity level, like you're in a place where all your past experiences have come to to this point that the likes of, you know, a lot of people, if they're going on Cage Warriors, that will get into their head. A lot of people, when they're making their pro debut in Dublin, that will get into their head. That It seems like that you figured out, like I said, this is what you do. This is what you're going to do. Just enjoy it. There is going to be nerves. There yeah. is going to be the highs and lows. And you just have to kind of take them as they come roll with them that's obviously exactly. that if you look back at your very first amateur fight to where you are now if you were still that person in the first fight could you imagine where you'd be now like how far you've come yeah well like i was actually only talking to one of my mates about this the other day uh one of my mates ross started out training with me and ross never really <clears throat> he never really um he never really had as many fights as me or anything like that, but he always just tipped away and we're still training together now. Like he's one of my best mates and we're always in and out of the gym together. Uh, he's been helping me this week. We've just been going on trots and stuff like that, chatting shit and just trying to cut a bit away. He's just been helping me out. And uh, just talking about like, you know, when we started, we were 14 and we were just having a bit of fun. And uh, I just liked it. I just really, really liked it. And then more and more things started to come from it. I think 17, I had my amateur debut. And all I was doing was I was just fighting because I loved it. And kind of in the last few years, I've started to plan where I'm going and stuff like that. But if you had told that 17-year-old kid, you're going to be signed to Cage Warriors by the time you're 21, like I would have been like <laughs> head blown. Like I didn't, not that I didn't think it was possible. I always knew it was possible. I knew it was good. I was good enough, but it's mad to see it happening and it's mad to talk about these things and then actually seeing them happening. Uh, me and my missus went to Cage Warriors back in October uh, to watch the guys fight. Uh, I think Leon, Taka and Ryan fought on the card and we walked into the building, we were walking around, I was looking into the cage and I said to her, I was like, I'm going to fight there next year. It's like, just have a feeling. I was like, I'm going to be in that cage next year and... I'm going, I, and we're going to end up fighting here. I was like, I just have that feeling. I was like, I'm going to wear, the, wear the yellow gloves. And she was just listening to me. She was like, yeah, yeah. And then next, you know, after the pro debut, the call comes in. They want me signed. I'm fucking delighted. And then we're here in April now. It's only a few months later and it's actually happening. So it's the law of attraction, speaking everything into existence and believing it. Like, you know, I believe where I'm going and I understand where I'm going and it's just about constantly speaking that into existence and believing it and working towards it constantly. That's all I've done. Even since the last one, I've just worked relentlessly towards this. So it's just about keeping the ball rolling now. You know, and rolling, you will keep it. Talk to us about, you said obviously you got the call from Cage Wires and what was it like finding out, like I said, it was a multi-fight deal as opposed to obviously they yeah. to Dublin, like I said, people would get their shot as like a one fight sort of a deal. But what was it like when they when it was offered the multi fight deal because that's a big deal to get that after your yeah. first, first how what were your emotions when you found that out? Uh, so I was in, I was in A and E. <laughs> <laughs> I was in, I was in, I was in A and E. Uh, cause in in the in my pro debut, I cracked my hand off your man's head in during the ground and pound. I was hitting a man. I didn't crack it. I it was a little sprain. It was grand. Uh, but I just wanted to get x ray and I they wanted me to get an x ray on Saturday night tonight in the fight and me being me I left it off for a few days I just got them to wrap it up and I went on Monday so I went on yeah I think it was the Monday after the fight so I fought Saturday I chilled out all day Sunday and then I drove up on Monday and I was with my missus my missus came with me and I was sitting in A&E and Phil gave me a call and 
bit he was just like are you on your own and I was like oh shit and I was like one second just kind of left the room and I was like well what's the crack and basically just told me what the story was uh, said after seeing me said they wanted to sign me uh, he said he's he actually said that uh, no, I don't want to be blowing up my own bubble or anything like that. But he actually said they've been watching my amateur career, and they were watching a few Miami fights. And uh, straight away, I think Chris sent the my finish in my pro debut. I think he sent it to Ian Dean, and Ian took an interest as well. Straight away, Ian got in contact with Graham. Graham was after seeing one or two Miami fights, and they wanted me on board straight away. Once they found out that I was keen to sign with them, uh, I was happy to be on board. I was delighted to be honest, and. I can't wait for it now, man. I can't wait for just take each fight as it comes. The way I see it is it's five fights. I can make the absolute most out of these fights. I'm one and all right now. Get these five fights done. All going my way. That's six and all. And then we'll see where we are. Like, you know, I'm knocking on the door for a title shot there in Cage Warriors. I'm knocking on the door of the UFC. Whatever's going to happen, it's going to happen. But I believe in myself and I believe I'm going to make the most I can out of these next five fights. It's going to be completely different. Like, you're going to talk to me in two years and you're going to be like, oh, shit, all that shit just happened. Everything that you just said happened. And, like, that's just, I I thoroughly believe that. Like, there's just nothing in me that doesn't believe it. So that's what's going to happen. Yeah, no, and that's why I like doing these interviews because in two years we can actually look back on this interview and see what you've said and then we can re-bring it all back up again and you can see that you've always talked this into existence and, it's kind yeah. of cool that you said that they were obviously looking at your amateur career because obviously you had the Dean Adri- Adriscoll one, the really quick knockout against a, a guy. Yeah. Obviously, as much as you disliked the guy, the, the you and Brian Manning fight was a is a massive fight. Well, that was a dominant yeah. performance. Like, um, and yeah. then look how he's kind of rose within the amateur after that exactly. fight as well. Um, it's mad that they were watching amateur. I know, obviously, um, they they would take interest, but it's mad that they're watching amateur and they're take like I said they're taking you straight kind of just one pro debut straight into into amateur. I'd say, yeah. like, but the way that you walked in, you said you were going to fight there, you believed it, and that's just down. A lot of people might say, "Oh yeah, it's easy for people to say that," but that's because you work that into existence. You don't just talk it into existence; you work it into existence yeah. as well. Because yeah. you're probably one of the most easygoing like people, but. You just work like a dog, don't you? Like, yeah. no, you just you just love this. This is your life. Yeah, it's hundred percent. There's nothing like it's just every day, man. Every day, just it's wanting to get better. It's genuinely wanting to get better for no one else other than yourself. You know, that's that's what you need to have in your head. You know, every day I wake up, I want to get that little bit better, and it's not for anyone else. It's for me. You know, I understand what I get out of it in the long run and everything like that. But it's for me, it makes me a better person. You know, I genuinely believe when every day I get up, I do my runs, I do my sparring, I eat clean, do everything right. I genuinely believe that when I go to bed that day, that, I, that I'm a better person than when I woke up. And that's just the day by day, rinse and repeat, day by day. You know, it's just, it's like what you said, it's easy to speak these things into existence. It's like some people can say, oh yeah, that's easy. Well, it's easy to, speak yourself into being a waster as well and not doing that with your life like and then constantly just making up excuses excuses you know you could also you can do that or you could also go the other way you can talk the right shit and the thing that everyone forgets about manifestation or the law of attraction the thing that any everyone forgets is you have to believe something religiously but then also you have to work like a motherfucker to get that you know, it's not just going to happen for you. You have to work, constantly work, 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 work. And the thing that I found is the more you work, the more stronger that belief is going to get. And that's exactly what's happened with me. And that's what's going to keep happening. I have no desire to stop working or stop believing these things. You know, I can't wait to just go, let it fly and then do it all again. Yeah, no, it's good. And you like that, uh, the way you, like you said, you work is good. You have two kind of choices in life. You can work for what you want, which is going to be really, really hard, right? Just say if it's a college degree or whatever it may be, it might be fine. It's going to be really, really hard. It's going to be really, really hard to know that you could have had that and you didn't even try as well, or you didn't bother, or you're doing a minimum wage job because you didn't want to put the effort in now, but now your effort's been put into something that you don't want and you don't like. So you've obviously picked the right path. And you spoke about eating clean there. Do you have a nutritionist? Because we spoke before actually about the likes of these protein bars and all this kind of stuff. And yeah. How, like, 
I've gone to Little and Ali, and I don't, I don't want to name drop, and I just name drop. But all these places, it's not just them. Other supermarkets have like, oh, protein, like this is full of protein. And if you actually look at the packaging, it's also high in sugars. It's also high in saturated yeah. fats. It's always high in things. Do you think that the fitness market and stuff for for athletes, like for boxers, MMA fighters, do you think they're being targeted, like because this is the in thing that companies try and pull the wool over people's eyes with this kind yeah. of product? Well, it's just about it's just about being well educated. Uh, I don't I don't have, I don't have I don't have a nutritionist as of right now, but I educate myself I educate myself as much as I can on nutrition and the way the human body works, and what I found for myself and for most people, it's you just gotta have you just gotta have natural food in you. You know, don't be going for any of this artificial. If it's easy made, it's it's shit. <laughs> like you, yeah, like. When I when I first started getting really into my diet and really into I shouldn't call it dieting because uh when you call something a diet, it's it's like you're setting yourself up for failure, you know. You're like, Oh, I'm going on a diet and then two or three weeks later you're gonna be eating shit again. It's just it's the lifestyle, you know, you need to have a lifestyle of eating clean and you need to just have in your head that this is the way it is now. I'm getting up every day and I'm eating clean and blah blah blah. And maybe one day you have a bar of chocolate and then you're like, Okay, today was a bad day, but tomorrow's gonna be better. It doesn't need to set you down the wrong path around. But I think just mainly staying clean and I think my coach said to me before, Phil said to me before, uh you only want to be eating it if it came from the earth or if it made a noise, if it moved or if it <laughs> <laughs> you know. If it if it uh if it chip chip chirped or anything like that, that's all you want to be eating. Like just fucking real food, nothing artificially made, nothing that came from anything else, or just real food, and that's all you want to be fueling your body with. Really, I don't have I don't have a nutritionist, but I try to educate myself as much as I can on uh on on healthy eating and on what I should be putting into my body and what's best to put into your body for what I'm doing, training wise, fight wise, losing weight, everything like that. Yeah, well, even you, I don't believe you've ever missed weight, anyways. And uh, no, so like, what well, obviously you don't need nutritionists, you've done the research. See, a lot of people is it like that's a lot of extra work for people, but obviously, this is your lifestyle, you want to create the best you, so you've looked into this yourself. So, you don't need a nutritionist if you're making way easy, then why hand out the extra money? And I can see why people would yeah. need certain cases, but you've done the receipt research and you know yourself what, what you need and what you don't need. But looking forward to this weekend it's going to be in Dublin obviously you fought in Dublin uh for your pro debut but this is going to be a much bigger event how do you feel about the much bigger event uh the bigger crowd stuff like are you going to stop because a lot of people think that they got or they say they go into the cage and they kind of they zone everything out are you going to kind of enjoy the atmosphere and soak it in I've never been I've never been one to I don't know if it's just my personality or or uh I don't know if it's because I'm really calm in there but I've never been one to even if I try zone out, I can't really, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll like automatically when I walk in, I'll see like a big crowd and straight away I'll notice all my people. I'll see my ma's head or my dad's head or I'll see my girlfriend straight away. Like straight away I notice all them people. Uh, I've never wanted to zone out, but I think that's just kind of the calmness in there. Uh, when I'm in the fight, when I'm in the fight, I'm absolutely just, I'm in, I'm in on my opponent. But obviously like sometimes... It's just a it's just a case of being relaxed. I'll still notice everything. I'll still notice the roars. I'll still notice I'll be able to hear my I'll be able to hear my coach's voices. It's one thing they've said to me, well actually, that I can do well is that I listen to them when they're talking to me. There was actually one stage in my last fight where uh Chris told me I was in a I was in a certain position, I forget what it was, but he was like he was like, Straighten your leg, straighten your leg and then he goes, Straighten your right leg and I straightened my right leg and I ended up getting top in the position and I was thinking in my head I was like you fucking you genius Chris I was like I was like it's just you have to you have to stay aware in there basically like you have to you have to be able to see everything and like a lot of people do say the zone out well not me as much like I I stay in that moment and I try just be there as much as I can you know and me me being there like I know I know how good I am standing in front of this guy you know like even even if it's gonna even if I'm not gonna win, it's gonna be a hell of a night for him getting me out there, like you know. So that's that's all I know. That's all I'm always like. I I can hear everything, I can see everything, and I'm still zoned in on my opponent. I can hear and see everything as well from him. Yeah, and that's good. And like that, you always see, it, and especially with Chris, I've noticed when I'm at shows, 
Especially if you don't do what Chris says as well, you, you're gonna hear him even more. Um, but, yeah. yeah. But what's, what's that pairing like? I we've talked about it before, but I I love talking about uh Phila and Chris. Like you said, they were like your first novice coaches together, wasn't it? They yeah. Were well, the corner and the, it came full circle to the pro debut. What's that? Pa- that's, yeah. a, that's an unbelievable pairing. Uh, well, it's just kind of the boys have always been mates. Chris and Phil are best mates, and uh, they buzz off each other. They're very, they're a funny duo to hang around and uh, just to talk shit with and stuff like that. Uh, but the first time I met Chris was at my first novice fight, and he was there for my first novice fight, and then he was there a few fights after that as well. He was there, and him and Chris were, or Phil was mainly coaching, but Chris was shouting a few things from the side, and then. It was Phil. It actually came about Phil just training for all his fights. Uh, he would have started bringing me up to Dublin, and I would have just started moving around with the guys and took a liking to it. And I liked the hard training and just constantly kept trying to get up as much as I can. And then when I got my car and everything like that, I just started making the trip up like every week, every week. Even before I got the car, I was already making them trips. I was just getting the bus up every week, over and over, uh, trying to get up as many times as I could a week, just for the hard rounds and stuff like that but it's mainly just like it's having the two it's having two guys there that automatically like I can trust them you know they have my Chris has my best intentions at heart and Phil has my best intentions at heart and what I was talking about earlier about me just wanting to constantly get better 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 that's all they want as well you know when I'm talking to them that's all they want they don't really like they're very selfless they don't want anything from me they just want me to they just want to see me doing well and Obviously, I just want to represent them. I just want to represent the teams. I want to fucking do well by them, and that's all it is. You know, they want to. They want to see me getting better. I want myself to get better, and I want to be able to represent their teams well. So all three of us mixing really well together. Chris and Phil are just a great duo to have. Kind of, you know, they they bounce off each other. They're very good together. They let each other. They don't. Neither of them ever clash. They talk about everything. Uh no one's there's never anyone pushing over the other one like you know they're always they're always a team with me and they're great they're just a great buzz to have around man to be honest uh, they're best mates like so uh, I like the energy between them and they always like they're always good at getting you ready to go so uh, I like I really like the pairing and they're the guys that I want to stay with me for my whole my whole journey you know they're the guys I trust and I can tell, like, you know, all they want from me is just me to do well, and that's all I want. So I couldn't be happier with I feel I'm, I'm almost just pure luck, man, that I fell in with these coaches. You know, very grateful that these guys are my coaches because uh, they talk about, Chris talks about as well, he won't coach fighters. Like, he doesn't have a certain bond with or a certain click with, you know. He needs to be able to get on with these guys. And I find that very much with Chris and with Phil, they just... They do, they do right by me, and I do right by them. So it's a very good relationship, and I'm, I'm blessed to be with two teams. To be honest, yes, it's a fantastic pair, and then to make you the trio of it as well, we can see the like, see how good you're getting, and you can see even fight to fight how much better you're getting, and when you're able to listen to their advice. But we're not obviously going to look past your opponent this weekend. But like, do you have yeah. plans for the rest of the year? I know, congratulations, you have a child coming very soon. Obviously, yeah. that's kind of offset you a little bit on on maybe what you originally had planned last year but um have you have your plans for after this fight or are you going to take some time out and spend some obviously you're going to spend some time time with the child and and your partner yeah so after this fight well the baby's due uh the baby's due any time really now uh it's due it's due on the 17th but obviously like she could go early she could go later so we're just staying ready right now, but still going ahead with the fight. Everything's all go with the fight. Hopefully she doesn't go into labour while I'm fighting <laughs> or anything like that. But after this, uh, after this, it's just about spending a bit of family time together, chilling out with her. But it's just my lifestyle, man. You know, any chance I get to get out that door and train, I'm gonna take it. Like you know, it's that's just that's just always uh that's just always the way it is. It's my lifestyle, but. Obviously, I'm going to take a bit of time, chill out with her. Uh, I can't wait to meet the baba. Can't wait to be a father. Can't wait for all that kind of stuff. And then as soon as I'm out, man, I'm going to get back to it. I'd love to fight again in June or July. June might be a bit soon, but I think July is very doable. 
And then if Cage Warriors has another show on in October or November, I'll jump back onto it. I want I want three fights this year. So whatever way I'm going to fit them in, I'm going to fit them in, get three fights in, and then see where I am at the start next year. We'll keep the we'll keep it going. I want to stay with Cage Warriors, and I want to stay building my profile in there, getting good fights, beating good guys, and. You know, last year and what I've been doing at amateur was I was trying to prove that I was the best in Ireland. And I think I think I done that by a landslide. Like if you look at the guys, like there's very good guys out there now. Like, you know, Dan O'Sullivan's beating everyone right now. Manning's beating everyone right now. But I beat these guys, you know, and I, like there's one thing that you can set apart from like a lot of guys in my weight class, welterweight and middleweight. A lot of the guys are good, but not a lot of the guys have like an unblemished record like mine. And like, you know, I know I know I have my one loss out at the uh, World Cup. Yeah. <clears throat> but other than that, in Ireland, like I don't think I've ever lost a fight. Um six and one at Ami. I had no Irish guys have beat me like not on home soil. I've beaten all the guys that have been put in front of me here and same with my pro debut. I proved that I'm the best in Ireland and now it's about moving on and just proving that I'm the best in Europe and then the world. That's all all I've ever wanted to do is fight the best competition possible. So Cage Warriors yeah. is the next step to that. I don't want to be fighting anything anyone that's not the best or anyone that's not that shouldn't be in there you know I want to just be competing and I want to earn my stripes yeah and and that you are doing like I said because I was looking at your record actually earlier just to refresh my memory before we came on and that's why I know it's your only one loss was at the World Cup and I believe it was your second yeah. fight I want to say as well was it your second yeah. fight? second fight yeah. so and then you just went on an absolute spree like you said uh, O'Driscoll like, and like you said O'Sullivan's got two titles now uh, yeah, Manning's got two titles now. Like, and you yeah. beat these guys, and you beat like you beat these guys. So yeah, I can't wait to see what happens. What I like is obviously with your the multi fight deal, you've got the option then to go to the UK and fight. It's not like you have to wait for a a Cage Warriors Dublin to come around, and yeah. hopefully you can get those three fights in. Um, I'm gonna let you go though. I want to wish you the best of luck with the fight. I'm gonna be watching. Uh, Congratulations again on the baby. But before you go, is there anything you want to say before you go or anyone want to shout out? And once again, I want to thank you so much for your time. It's an absolute pleasure talking to you. Uh, no, I'll just, I'll show my sponsor real quick. Uh, obviously, KF and Honey Badger, the two gyms, uh, the two clubs I'm going to be wrapping at the weekend. Uh, thanks to you, Davey, for the time on the interview. Fucking unreal. It's always a pleasure. Uh, I'll give a shout out to my sponsors, uh, or on Fitz from Fitz's Sills and Demolitions, uh, or four twenty. Uh, the guys are downtown. It's a smoke shop downtown. Uh, for any of your smoking needs, uh, there is Digital Financial Services who are after jumping on board to sponsor me as well. There's a uh, Matt's Garage. There is uh Paddy Weldon, and then we have uh Smartphones Ireland. Smartphones Ireland are after jumping on board as well. I actually need to stick up a post about them guys tonight. Uh, just mainly want to say all them guys I'm after listening out there. Huge thanks to them because they really make uh they really make my life easier as in terms of a pro fighter. You know they let me focus on everything that they let me focus on everything that I have to focus on and to take all the hard bits away. You know this fight camp I didn't need to worry about anything nutrition wise or even the likes of just petrol for driving up and back and forth to Dublin and stuff like that, paint tolls just living, you know, they take they take a lot of stress off and I'm very grateful to have all them sponsors on board and I hope to keep as many of them on board as I can for the next few coming fights, uh, shout out to all them guys um, and yeah shout out to all my supporters that are going to be there on Saturday night, whether you're in the arena or you're watching uh, guys, I'm blessed for y'all, I'm blessed to be living this life and I just can't wait to go in and compete and I can't wait to see you compete. And that's one thing I've noticed all the fights I've been to. No matter if you were in Nori, if you were in Clamel, if you were in Dublin, you always bring a crowd for you. You always bring a crowd and it must be good to have that support. But I am going to let you go. Thank you so much. And I will talk to you. I will talk to you after the fight, but I'll be watching the fight anyway. All right? Thank you so much. 100%. You're a legend, Davey. Thank you, bro. Cheers. Thank you, Pat. Okay.